All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Sorna channel. So here doing a Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, actually, the reason why I'm jumping back into doing videos is um, my brother is interested in kind of dabbling with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, I've been playing it for a long time, uh, since like the 90s. I think. Anyway, um, this is going to be kind of like a tutorial video, but um, I kind of want to just show you what I do, um, you know, on any given day. So um, I am part of a virtual airline uh, called Delta, uh, Delta, Fly Delta Virtual. That's what it is. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of how I go about setting up a flight. Um, using SimBrief, and I will be flying the PMDG 737-800 today. So <clears throat> I'll just show you the, um, this is a live map of my uh, virtual airline. Virtual airlines are fun because you can kind of, I don't know, it just adds a little bit of immersion to your simulator experience. Um, it's kind of like having a job. So these are all the active flights. Um, I'm not going to go over in great detail the whole site um, but just kind of like most most um, virtual airlines will have a lot of the similar features that this one has um, of course it might look a little bit different on their websites um, I've been a member of like seven or eight different um, virtual airlines um, so the easiest thing at least in, in this airline is I can fly a chartered flight which is I can fly from anywhere to anywhere using any type of equipment. Um, but if you go with scheduled flights, um, you have to use specific equipment based on your pilot ranking. And of course, your pilot ranking is uh, dictated by how many flights you do. So the more flights you do, the higher your ranking, the more, um, you know, uh, the more f uh, different airplanes that you can use and things like that. So we're just going to do a chartered flight today. Um, oh, I had an old one in here. So um, just for the purpose of this video, we're going to do a, a short hop in the 737. Um, we'll just call it, uh, I don't know, how about 1200? Flight 1200, Delta Flight 1200. Probably doesn't exist in real life, but maybe it does, and it's probably not from Boston to uh, JFK. But that's what we're going to do today. So you just choose your departure and arrival airport. You choose your equipment type. Um, in this case, we will be doing the 737-800. Now, this information I'm actually going to pull from SimBrief. So go over to SimBrief. If you don't already have SimBrief uh, by Navigraph uh, or a Navigraph su subscription, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, it's using real-world data and maps and charts and things like that. Um, and also, it has um, a connection to your simulator where it will update the current AIRX cycle, um, any types of plugins or, or charts that you have in the actual game itself, and then any add-on packages you have. So I have the PMDG 737, 800, and 700. And it updates the same information into those add-on packages as well. And this is um, basically what the real-world AIRX cycle is. So, um, meaning all the airports in the sim are going to look exactly like they look right now in real life as far as, um, you know, SIDs and STARS and all that stuff. So, uh, you can build your flight plans. You go to Dispatch and then My Flight Plan. I think I have an old one in here. Yep, I do. So we'll click on new flight. We're going to do Delta 1200. Uh, departing from Boston. Going to JFK in New York. Choose your choose your aircraft type. Boeing 737-800. And then they even have the different variants for the PMDG. So that's not really a huge deal. You can just do default. 
Um, and of course, if you're not flying the 737-800 um, or the PMBG, you don't have to pick a variant. Um, and then a lot of the stuff is going to naturally fill in, um, automatically fill in. Um, fuel planning, um, I always add, so you can kind of, it's, it's on automatic, so it's going to give you, it should give you enough fuel based on your, your flight path. Um, but I always give it a little bit of extra just to be safe. So we're going to give it an extra 30 minutes of fuel. Whoops. I noticed that happened last time I was doing this too. It changed uh, when I changed the um, type. So it's 30 minutes of extra fuel. You can select different routes if you wanted to, but it's basically going to use, it uses a bunch of different websites to find what the most popular route is uh, based on the current conditions. So it's also using the current weather conditions um, with Boston and New York. So that being the case, it looks like this is going to be our selected route. You can you can find different SIDs and stars and things here. And there's a lot of different things you can do. But again, I'm showing you what I normally do. So fuel planning, I add an extra 30 minutes. I've got all the other information in here. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit uh, generate flight. So this is going to generate an actual... Uh, the actual flight itself. So it now it's showing the actual departure time, the arrival time, how much time will be in the air, the actual block length of time. Um, and you can use this to, you can file this um, into VATSIM. Um, if you're going to fly on VATSIM today, we're not going to be flying on VATSIM. Um, you can download, um, there are different flight plan downloads that you can download for, um, you know, various different add-ons and things like that um, if you wanted to but um, the nice part about the PMDG is they recently made it so that it's really easy to integrate this information directly into the sim um, we also should get the sim going in the background so I'm gonna pull up the world map we're going to go to Boston and we're flying Delta, so Delta at Boston flies out of Terminal A, which is kind of right in this section here. So we'll just pick one of these gates for parking. We'll pick A16, um, and actually, we'll actually pick it up here. I've noticed that if you pick it from there, it sometimes doesn't stick. So we'll go up here, we'll scroll down to A16, and we'll change our flight information. So we get the PMDG, we've got the Delta, Livery, customize menu. Uh, we'll do twelve hundred, and fly. So we'll let that load up in the background. So heading back over to SimBrief, get all the information. It's even got your load sheet here, so it's got your, um, you know, weights and measurements for the aircraft. All of this is going to be automatically. <clears throat> loaded into uh, the sim via the add-on um, via the PMDG FMC computer. Um, but we'll go back to the Fly Delta virtual page and we'll load this information up. So departure time is, oh, first of all, the cruise level is 21,000 feet. So we will head up there make our cruise level 21,000. Departure time is always going to be sometime in the near future, probably about 20 minutes out. So departure time UTC is currently 1422 UTC. Departure time is 1450. So we'll put that in here, 1450. Arrival time is about 1603. And the actual flight duration will use the block time, so one hour and uh, 13 minutes, but it rounds up here, so one hour and 15 minutes. And we'll add this to our bids. And there we have it. So now that flight is loaded up for my virtual airline. This is, it's loaded up here in the, um, in SimBrief. And I can hear... 
here the beautiful morning in Boston so we'll jump right into the cockpit um, we won't worry about ATC right now so I'm gonna be flying without um, uh, any traffic or anything like that so it looks like we've got the stairs attached so uh, first things first in the PMDG you're gonna go to the FMC hold the menu button um, I'm of course doing this from cold and dark at the gate so hold the menu button that will um, make the FMC come to life and then all the actions for the sim are done through the FMC here so uh, for ground services I'm actually gonna take out the stairs uh, release the stairs I won't bother um, putting a jetway on um, so we'll just leave it at that um, it uh, make sure your doors are all closed and things like that and then I'm going to show you how to integrate um, all the sim brief data into the FMC but now we've got um, information in here so ground services we've got the wheel chocks set we're going to request the ground power and that's going to do it for that for now so now the ground uh, the ground power is being connected it is connected now so we'll we'll go through that procedure here in just a second um, so actually we could do it now so um, oh the other thing I was going to show you is so for my particular um, virtual airline we use black box black box virtual um, now in here you can also update um, or integrate SimBrief so it makes it super easy so you can see my bid in here um, I refresh that and we'll click on fly so we'll fly this actual flight so all that information is already in here flight level 210 it doesn't have the miles and passengers yet but this little guy right here click on SimBrief and all that data that we just set up including the route comes over so we we'll click load and I always get rid of the DCTs which means direct but it shows up on the world map as a waypoint so we don't want that um, it does also load all of the information um, ATIS and things like that um, into the notes section I usually just get rid of that um, and then I'll put any notes for regarding the flight itself so we get 138 passengers today and we'll get going so that's basically it but this um, this program is tracking the flight that you create it's got some neat features like if you go into the settings you have co-pilot callouts ground proximity callouts uh, of course the PMDG has its own ground proximity callouts so I have that unchecked um, cabin announcements um, you can play a sound at the top of descent so that it kind of alerts you in case you're not in the room um, and then you can change um, the volume and stuff like that so if it's too loud in the sim or what have you you can do that um, your sim brief information is in here as well um, and then you can also change your fuel units time zone stuff like that but we'll head back to the f uh, a cars um, back to the flight some brief load that in and we will go ahead and hit start you'll hear the cabin announcement come on good evening ladies and gentlemen on behalf of delta sky team and our global partners welcome Hello. on board your delta flight as you're making your way to your seat we kindly ask that you please step into your row and out of the aisle as quickly as possible to allow those passengers behind you to make their way to their seat as well if you're traveling with a larger roller board please place it in the overhead bins either wheels or handles first on either side of the aircraft Keeping in mind that the overhead bin space is shared space, so if the bin directly above your like seat is already full, loud. please go so, ahead and utilize uh, the next Turn that down. Space. Hopefully that works. If you brought in a second item with you, such as a briefcase, tote bag, laptop bag, backpack, you can go ahead and right, utilize so that space under the seat in front of you. It has all the information so here. That we can utilize that overhead bin space we'll for larger bags without having to um, check them inside to your final destination. Now we are going to use the electronic flight Feel bag. Feel free to utilize your mobile phones, tablets, and e-readers while we're here at the gate. However, once we close our boarding door, you must please place these items into airplane mode or turn off your cellular service. So I'd like to thank you all for choosing to fly Delta. Welcome on board. I feel like that is super duper loud, so I'm turning that down a little bit for my own headset. Um, 
so we're here in the electronic flight bag you can see I clicked on electronic flight bag and I can request the data from SimBreeze so you can actually go in to this and um, enter your SimBrief information into the settings um, and when you hit that it's literally going to pull over the information so now my flight is loaded into the sim um, of course you can zoom out zoom in um, it's a pretty short flight so it's you know the entire thing is shown right here <clears throat> but even for longer flights um, you're gonna have the entire thing on here including SIDS and stars so a um, couple of different ways that you can get the airport information so you could tune to the ATIS um, on here or or get it from SimBrief or you know get other ATIS information um, available online I'm just gonna use SimBrief so um, lo having loaded that in um, we're gonna go ahead and get our plane uh, powered up and should be good to go there so so we already uh, turned on the FMC um, we've loaded the sim brief information into the electronic flight bag so we're gonna start with our startup check cold and dark startup checklist so we'll start by heading up to the overhead we'll turn on the battery and to keep the battery from dying we'll turn on the ground power and that's gonna get power to the aircraft um, we are going to turn on our anti-collision light now that there's power to the aircraft so that nobody so that people know that we have power in the aircraft now I'm not going to be doing everything exactly like the real world I'm kind of doing it like a quick uh, way so that um, you know you at least can see what needs to be done but of course you can refer to the PMDG manuals and um, go through the cold and dark startups which might be a, a smidge different than what we're doing um, I do use um, pushback by ambitious pilots it I don't know if the sounds gonna work it kind of sporadically works but um, we're gonna do our pre pre planned pushback so we know that the aircraft is facing the right direction and that it winds up in a safe spot um, to head towards runway now we're at terminal a so the only way out is left so we will have the nose facing that way and we'll set the parking brake of course you can do that by going to here and setting the, f the parking brake here um, but this is just a quick way to do it here in the pushback menu so now that my aircraft is powering up and things are coming to life we will align, set it to nav, we'll align the IRSs. Those are aligned. We'll go back to the overhead, turn on our yaw, yaw damper. Um, we are going to be using all three fuels. Um, well, the wing fuel tanks and the center fuel tank. So, um, but for now, as far as what we need for um, fuel pumps is just the left um, aft fuel pump. Um, so we'll turn that on and we will fire up the APU. This is going to transfer our power away from the ground power and to the APU generators, um, which I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, we'll turn the emergency lights on. We'll turn the seatbelt lights on. And the electric pumps are off. Turn the window heat on. We want all four window heaters on. Uh, left and right recirc fans are on auto. Um, we will have the... APU bleed on, left pack to auto, isolation valve to auto, right pack off. We'll set our cruising altitude of 21,000 feet, flight level 210. 
And we need to find out what the landing altitude is. So we're going to head back to Simbrief. This will be kind of cool um, to show you how this works. So you go back to Simbrief, and then you can actually import this into Navigraph's charts. And by doing that, you're actually going to populate the entire route and charts and everything are all available through this program. So you can see my entire flight is on here. Um, but what we need to know is what the altitude is at JFK. So we can actually go right into um, uh, information about the airport. Oh, I'm sorry, right down here. Um, so if I click on this, this is actually going to show the airport diagram, um, an airport chart. So we can see the lengths of the runways, all that information is on here. And then we are expecting, let's go back here, we are expecting 22 left at JFK. So that would be right here. Um, so the elevation there is 12 feet. So what that means is I'm setting up the aircraft to land at the correct altitude um, off the ground based on the elevation of the Earth. So because it's closer to zero than it is to 25, we will leave it on zero. Turn the logo lights on, wing, wheel, well. We'll wait for the strobes uh, until we're on the active runway. That is all set. We've got our APU is fired up and the generators are ready to be changed over or the power is ready to be changed over to these APU generators. So we're gonna turn on both APU generators and now we are off of ground power. So at this point we can disconnect uh, from the ground power and we're good to go um, because the power is running off of the APU. Uh, so now we're going to go down to the main control panel. Uh, we're going to turn our flight directors on. Turn our auto throttle on. Throttle on. And for the purposes of this flight, we're just going to put in our cruising altitude of 21,000 feet. And the main control panel is all set. I'm going to turn off the master caution. So now we need to enter our IRS position into the FMC. Uh, to do that, we can head over to the FMC, go to position in it. Uh, we're going to enter KBOS for the reference airport. And then I always just use uh, the last uh, GPS position um, and put that right into the IRS. Head over to route. Um, KBOSS is already there, so we'll put that at the origin. And then this is where SimBrief is getting integrated into the Sim. So we're going to hit request on flight plan. And you can see there's a couple of different ways that you can download the information into the FMC, but we're going to use SimBrief since we've already selected that. We're gonna set our payload and our fuel. So now, and you can do that manually also um, in the other section of the um, FMC, but with this, it's gonna automatically load all of that into your, onto your flight um, without having to manually load it. And then we'll select our route, hit request, Takes a couple of seconds for it to pop up. Route uplink ready. Hit load. It's loading in. You can see now our flight number is here. We don't have the runway in there yet, but we do know which runway is currently active based on the ATIS and based on the information um, in SimBrief. So we're going to hit activate, execute. And now everything's in there. So we are expecting uh, runway 27 at, Lo at Logan. 
So we're going to put in runway 27 and execute. We'll go to departures and arrivals. Head over to the KBOSS departures. We're going to select 27. And we are using the SOX 7 departure direct to buzzard. So what that means is we're going to go and use the SOX 7. And then there's no transition. It just goes direct to buzzard after that. Hit execute. And then we'll do the same thing with the arrival. You don't necessarily have to put the arrival information yet. But we might as well do it now just to save on time. So we know that when we get to JFK, we're going to be expecting runway 22 left. So we'll just go ahead and, for the purpose of this presentation, um, we'll just load that information in now. So we're using 22 left. We'll head back. We are using the Parch 3 star. And it looks like we'll be transitioning to Parch 3 from the SEY VOR. So we will do, what did I just say it was? Parch 3, right? Yeah, Parch 3. So we'll choose Parch 3, and then our transition is SEY. Hit Execute. And now our route is loaded in. So we'll head back here. Now we're going to load in all of our, um, you know, fuel and weights and things of that nature and get get the plane um, set up for, for flight. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just request the um, init figures. And this is actually, again, pulling it from the sim brief. You hit request it takes a couple of seconds it's going to load up and say that it's ready so uplink is ready hit load and now all of that information is right in here the only thing you're going to have to adjust is your cruising altitude because it's going to throw in kind of the um, range that you can have for your cruising altitude so we're going to do flight level 210 and then our um, our init page is all set. We can head over to N1. Uh, we'll derate the takeoff slightly. And we hit... Um, that. Uh, and then we're going to do uh, five flaps five here. And now our uh, reference speeds have come up. And you just going to make sure that they're in there as well. FMC is all set now. Um, the only thing we need to do is in the legs page, um, if there's any flight discontinuities, um, we're not going to get vectors today, so we're going to get rid of that, and we're good to go. So all of our entire route is loaded into the um, into the FMC. So we'll put this back on the takeoff reference page. And on the other FMC, we will just put in the legs. FMC is set. So that is all set for the sim. We don't have anything else attached. We've got our pushback set up. And we are good to continue. So we're going to... Head back up to the overhead. We're going to turn on all the fuel pumps. We are going to turn on the electric pumps. We are going to turn off the left pack. We already have our lights all set. And we are ready to call push and start. So. Oh, oh, you know what? I hadn't loaded in the fuel yet, so we are not using the center pumps. I just saw it on the overhead that uh, we had low pressure in the center fuel pumps, but so we don't need those for this flight. It's a short flight. Okay, so we are going to call for our push and start. Hit request pushback. Yeah, it's not working. Damn, that's too bad. 
Um, ambitious, ambitious Pilots, this is a great program for pushback, but it does have, it is a little buggy. Um, I know that they're working on that, but, um, so it's not working. So we're going to have to manually push back, um, which stinks, but that's okay. Um, not sure why that's happening. I'm going to have to look into that. So what we'll actually do, I think we can actually use, yeah, we'll just use the um, pushback feature in the FMC. So we can release the ground power. We'll just actually remove the chocks completely. And then we'll set up pushback. So we're doing, um, we're going to do a standard L, turn the nose to our left. We'll do a 90 degrees, select the tug, and see if this works. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Copy that. Ready for push tail right. Release brake brake, please. All right, so we can release the parking brake. Actually, you know what? We can use this. I think it's trapped because of. Brakes released. There we go. All right. So um, the pushback is going to start. It might not line us right up uh, where we want to be, but it'll be somewhat close. So. Brakes released. Here we go. See, like the. It's weird. Like the. Flight attendants, prepare your doors for departure, please. Cross check and all call is not working. So anyway, we're, we're going to start evening, the ladies aircraft and gentlemen, now, and so welcome on board your Delta flight. So in just a moment, we'll be showing you a brief presentation on the safety features of this aircraft. Um, engine number two. ask that you please direct your attention to the video monitors and flight attendants in the aisle. So island, I just turned on the ignition so switch for... Let's look at it better. Welcome so aboard, right and thank you for choosing Delta. The health and safety of our customers and crew is our number one priority and the shared responsibility of everyone on board. So before we depart, please pay attention to this important message. Stow all carry-on items securely in an overhead bin and place smaller items completely under the seat in front of you. Keep the aisles, exits, and bulkhead areas clear. If you lose an electronic device in your seat, do not adjust your seat and ask a crew member for help. As we leave the gate, fasten your seatbelt by inserting the metal tip into the buckle and adjusting the strap so it's low and tight across your lap. To release, lift the top of the buckle. Stay seated with your seatbelt fastened when the seatbelt sign is on. And keep it fastened whenever you're seated in case of sudden rough air. In the event of rough air, the crew might also need to buckle up for safety. We appreciate your understanding if our service is interrupted. Federal regulations require all passengers to comply with all crew members' instructions, along with the posted placards and lighted information signs throughout the cabin. Smoking, vaping, the use of e-cigarettes, or any smokeless product, including chewing tobacco, is not allowed on any Delta flight. Federal law prohibits tampering with, disabling, or destroying restroom smoke detectors. There are eight exits on this plane, eight doors, four on each side. Each door has a detachable slide that can be used as a raft. In the event of an evacuation, leave all carry-on items behind. All exits are clearly marked with a green exit symbol. Locate the nearest exits and remember, they might be behind you. If we lose power, lights will illuminate the aisle to guide you to an exit. It's unlikely, but right, if cabin so pressure changes, oxygen masks so will drop ATC, from the panels above um, your seat and inside the lavatories. The Reach up and pull the mask or streamer down to start the flow of oxygen. Right. Remove any face covering and place the mask over your nose and mouth. Slip the elastic strap over your head and adjust the mask if necessary. Breathe normally and note that oxygen is flowing, so don't worry if the bag doesn't inflate. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. A water evacuation is also unlikely. But just in case, no. life vests are in a compartment so beneath or adjacent three, three to your seat. So to use, three, three remove left. the vest from its container by pulling on the tab and then opening the pouch. Flip the vest over your head, wrap the strap seven. around your waist, attach it to the buckle in front, and adjust securely around your waist. As you leave the plane, inflate the vest by pulling down on the red tab at the bottom or manually inflate it by blowing into the tube at shoulder level. A water-activated light is attached to each vest. 
For children under 35 pounds, place the vest around their waist and secure the strap between the legs. See your safety card for more information. Additional life vests for in-lab children are in marked compartments at the front and rear of the plane. We'll distribute these vests if necessary. Before takeoff, bring your seat to its upright position and stow your tray table. Be sure your seatbelt is fastened, carry-on items are secured, and aisle armrests are at resting position. If you're seated in Delta One, please close your ottoman door. If your seat has a footrest, stow it now. Finally, take a moment to review the safety information card in your seat pocket. While we finish our safety check, please let us know if you have any questions. As we get ready for takeoff, please settle in. And from all of our crew, thank you for flying with Delta. Okay, so I couldn't really talk, I didn't want to talk over the, the announcements. So uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm checking the flight for discontinuities, make sure we're good to go there. Um, see, this looks a little weird. So we come from Buzzard to SEY, Parch, CCC. Rober, Crail. Uh, you know what? We can actually just fly directly to Rosley, so we'll skip on Capit. And then we should be good to go. Yeah, so that'll line us right up for um, landing on runway 22 left. All right, so you saw that. I mean, there must have been a change. Um, typically, uh, the active runway is the same one that comes up with Navigraph, but of course, uh, ATC gave us 33 left, so we'll go with 33 left. All right, so back to our startup checklist. Head back up to the overhead. We've already got the engines fired up. What we do want to do is change over to the engine uh, generators. So we'll do that. APU is not needed anymore so we will I'm sure that we are below 10 oh we're right at 11 degrees um, above zero Celsius so we do not need to turn on the anti-ice we can do that while we're in flight um, we are going to turn on the probe heat We are going to get this to auto, right pack to auto, APU bleed off, APU off, taxi light on, and the overhead is all set for now. We'll head back here. Um, we are going to set our trim, so we'll head back to our init ref page. And we can see that our trim is 4.58. So we're going to go ahead and set that. That's about right. A little bit more this way. Okay. And the plane is all set for taxi to the runway. Um, we will set our barometric pressure to the local by hitting B and that changed it to 3008 we will set our flaps to flaps 5 so we move that down our flaps are going to move out and we'll set our rejected takeoff to RTO or auto brakes to RTO which is rejected takeoff We are good there, and I think we've got everything good to go. We can release the parking brake. And we'll raise up the yoke, and we are good to taxi. So we're gonna go ahead and follow the ribbon here to the active runway, give it a little bit of power. Now you can see too, what's cool is all this stuff is being recorded on Black Box Virtual. So it's got my fuel, it tells 
it when I started the engines, when I put the lights on, um, set the flaps, all that stuff is in there. So we're a couple of minutes behind schedule, but that's okay. Uh, we spent a little bit of time kind of going over everything. So we're just going to taxi now to the active, and we'll be good to go. So once we get up to cruise altitude, um, I will probably cut the video off, and then I will come back once we're at the top of descent to kind of go over you know, what I do for the descent portion of the flight and preparing the air craft for landing. Put it back on map mode and we can go back to get nice and close on the map. Now feel free if you have any questions, I did go through this pretty quickly. If you have any questions or you know if something doesn't make sense, um, feel free to comment on this video and I'll be happy to assist you the best I can. I'm not a real-world pilot. Um, I am a flight sim and uh, I'm a simmer and um, an aviation enthusiast. So I've been doing this for quite a long time. Um, and of course, I don't want anyone to think that I know what I'm talking about, even though I do know what I'm talking about, at least to a certain degree, enough to have fun with the sim. Um, but, you know, this is not going to be exactly what you would do in a real aircraft. Um, it's going to be similar, but it's not going to be exactly correct. Um, yeah, I've been having this issue with the um, taxiing where the nose wheels, the nose gear doesn't turn um, sharp enough unless I'm going like five miles an hour. So. Anyway, that's why it's taken forever. Um, give it a little bit more power. Uh, so you can taxi at about 20 knots. Um, don't want to go much more than that because that's pretty much speeding. forgot was to set my speed, so we went back down. Uh, 147, so we'll put in, put in about 177 into the, um, into the speed. So we're going to be flying with LNAV and VNAV, so, um, Going a little fast. <coughs> I'm flying here. Right. Get it, we're flying. A little cloudy today. Might be why the active runway changed. Um, could be wind or. Who knows? Who knows why? Um, but we're going to follow exactly what it does. Um, so we're now heading to the active runway. When we get there, I'll show you what to do to get the aircraft into the air. But the cool, the coolest part, you know, honestly, Navigraph is probably the best flight sim tool that there is available. Um, you know, it it's got all the real world data, um, and the fact that it's integrated into the sim and you can pull all that data into the sim and you're using real world procedures, SIDs, STARS, routes, um, all the waypoints are up to date, all the taxiways, all the runways are all up to date. Um, if you don't have sim brief Navigraph, um, you're going to be at the default setting for your charts and maps and things like that. So, because of that, 
your um, you're not going to have all the up to date waypoints. So especially for flying on Vatsim, um, you might get you know ATC may give you a waypoint to or a fix is what they would call it um, to fly to, and if it's not in your database, you're going to have to go back to the controller and say I'm unable to to fly to that fix can you give me radar vectors or can you give me a different fix and it's just kind of a pain in the ass because you know you want to you don't want to be the guy that doesn't have it's that isn't up to date right and that you you have to adjust what you're doing just because you don't have Navigraph now obviously Navigraph costs money but I think it's well worth it. It's probably the most... It's, it's, it's definitely by far the most important tool in the game. So we're almost to the active runway here. And number 33 left. Now what's cool too is you can actually head over to um, Simbrief and you can actually see on the chart you know, the K-Boss you can see me moving on the map so that is a pretty cool feature too like I I like to have it up um, on a separate screen so I can I can read the charts and everything I'm not gonna go over how to read charts and things of that nature there are plenty of videos out there on how to do that um, I'm just basically showing you what I do when I fly when I do a flight so here we are, we're at runway 33 left. We will hold Boston short. Tower Delta 1200 at runway 33 left, ready for departure straight out departure. We will turn on Delta our one, two, landing zero, lights. Zero, three, three, four, we five. will turn on straight the strobe. We have been cleared for takeoff, so we're gonna go ahead and cleared for takeoff runway tree tree left delta one two. Head on to the runway. play with the settings on my um, joystick. I think that's what the problem is. The whole turning thing is taking forever to turn. Alright. Alright, so we're on the runway. We are lined up. And we are good to go. So we're going to back up the screen a little bit. Um, once we're airborne, we're going to turn on VNAV, LNAV, and, um, and, and arm the autopilot. So just a quick check of everything. We've got our flaps are set. Auto brakes are set. Lights are all set. We are good to go. So I'm going to hit the toga switch. There's a secret switch in this aircraft, which is right here. This is not really a toga switch, but it's just for... Uh, more for convenience. So I'm going to give it about 50% power. And the engines are good. We're going to go ahead and give it full thrust. Set toga. 80 knots. 80 knots. Airspeed's alive. Rotate. Rotate. And we've got a rate positive of rate of climb so we can bring the gear up. And once we reach a thousand feet above the ground level, a 
first of all, we can bring the flaps back now. I'm going to go ahead and arm VNAV and LNAV, and we will arm the autopilot. And we are good. So now the FMC... Oh boy. Let's Ladies and gentlemen, as we climb to our cruising altitude, we'd like to extend a special thank you to each of you. And a welcome right, back to our Skyline members and million milers. Your business and loyalty are greatly appreciated by the entire Delta family. That was For your safety, it's important to remain seated happen. with your seatbelt securely fastened any time the seatbelt sign is on. Still stalling. Even if the sign is off, please keep your seatbelt fastened in case we experience any huh. unexpected rough air. Well, okay, well, we were able to get out of there. I just added power to it. But we, were, we were definitely stalling there to for a second. Injury from articles that may have shifted during takeoff. Now reach an altitude where it's too busy looking out the window at the Boston Skyline. To use Skyline. approved electronic devices, and a listing of these devices can be found in Sky Magazine in the seat pocket in front of you. So you can follow your flight right here on the. Um, on today's flight in the economy cabin, it'll be our uh, pleasure to offer you complimentary Coca-Cola products, Starbucks coffee, water juices, a variety of complimentary snacks, as well as a selection of our fresh eats items and all-day goodies. All right. So, um, what you're hearing in the background. Beer, wine, and spirits are available, um, complimentary for our first class and Delta Comfort Plus passengers, ATC. as well as available it's for doing purchase for the which we cabin. really don't need to do. Um, a complete listing of available have, beverages. When I have as well as our um, fresh items can be found in traffic the in the sim, I usually pocket. will, you know, run this so that I am. Please be reminded that Delta accepts only major credit or debit cards for onboard um, purchases of beverages and snacks. However, you can use your Delta Sky Miles American Express card. Yeah, um, just to have um, separation and stuff Delta like that. But, um, obviously, we don't have any traffic on right HC now. So the I aircraft is now flying on as well as on um, um, We are currently. You will find that this screen will work best with just a light tap the and Feel free to we'll use your own headset. There, so we're, Otherwise, we're if you do need a headset, the just let a flight attendant know they are yours complimentary departure. for this and any future Delta flights. And flight. again, you can go back to Navigraph. So now I'm no longer on here, but now I can go to the SOC 7. And you can see that I'm currently flying the SOC 7 departure. I'm currently on that. You can actually put this right onto the big map. Roger, Delta, um, one, two, zero, zero. So if you do this, so it actually superimposes the chart right onto the map. Oh, we're at uh, 10,000 feet, so we can turn off our. Um, Landing lights. Definitely a cloudy day here in Boston. Heading out to New York. Uh, so, top of climb is going to be in about four minutes. We're 26 nautical miles. Let me zoom out the map a little bit. Oops. You can see our top of climb is right here, just before the end of the Sox 7 departure. Uh, now that we're over 10,000 feet, we're also able to go a little faster, so we're boosted up the power a little bit. The nice part about this, too, is um, you can see exactly where you are on the map. You know, so off to my left is Quincy, although we're in the clouds right now. So off to my left is nothing. So that's pretty much it. So we will um, let this fly. And oh, and so if we go back to Black Box, you can see. So see, something happened here. And I'm wondering if it has to do with the fact that I'm recording this probably is the, the case, but um, something happened where, you know, it lost connection for a second, and 
we definitely had issues with some stalling. Um, you can see I was actually removing the flaps and the the air the airspeed actually decreased, which is not good. But it keeps track of you know when you turn on the landing lights, taxi lights, all that stuff. You can pause it at the top of the descent if you want. It tells you exactly you know how far away you are from your destination. Um, you can go to the map. It will show you not only you, but it will show other people um, at the virtual airline um, that they're online. So this is me right here. And you can see my little track coming out of Boston here. Took off going northwest. Came around here on the Sox 7. We're heading out towards uh, Nantucket and the islands. And um, the other cool part is on the actual website for the airline, they have a live map as well there. So you can actually, can actually go in and you can, see, you can even see the weather on here. It's superimposed. So we've got me right here. And others right here you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hover over their names I don't want their names on um, on the video here but anyway we're gonna pause it there and we'll come back when it's time to set up the aircraft for arrival we're gonna switch over to <coughs> excuse me um, over to standard pressure once you're over 18,000 feet flight, flight level 180 and we're just about at our cruising altitude of flight level 210 or 21,000 feet. And uh, we'll be back to, well, actually, so let's just set up the, let's do the post takeoff checklist. I've been doing things kind of out of order. So put the gear back to the off position. We're going to put our auto brakes to two just for any type of emergency that might come up. We at least have it set. We are going to arm our speed brake. And we will set up the flight. Well, you know what? We can set up um, for the arrival now um, and just click on init ref. Um, and there's our approach reference right there. So ILS for 22 left. Uh, the nav radio is 110 decimal nine or zero so we'll change that um, I'm actually gonna set up an auto land it's just gonna be a lot easier because I can kind of talk while I'm doing it and not have to worry about flying it um, course heading is 224 so we'll change that on both flight directors 224 Four. And then um, the runway length is only 8,400 feet, so we are actually going to give it, um, we're going to set it free for the um, auto brakes. Alright, so the flight is um, at cruising altitude now. Um, we're definitely under 10 degrees, so head over the overhead and turn on the wing and engine anti-ice and the plane is virtually set up oh, look at that nice cloud cover there it's beautiful um, it's virtually set up for arrival but I'm also going to set up the auto land so we'll do that over here change it to this setting here just by hitting mode and then we're gonna put in the runway elevation. So I forget what it was. It was like 13 or 12 feet or something like that. But again, we can go back to our charts. We can pull up the airport info for JFK. We're gonna be landing on uh, 22 left, which is the elevation is 12 feet. So we're gonna put in runway elevation of 12. And we're going to put in the length, which is, what did I say, 8,400? Yeah. So 8,400 feet. 
and the auto land is all set. Um, the approach course, we need to basically come down to 1,800 feet on our final approach. So we're going to put that into the MCP. That way, when we get to our top of descent, it will actually just automatically start descending. And we're cruising on our way to New York, so we'll be back when it's time to descend and approach JFK. See what comes up then. Okay, <clears throat> so we're just about to hit the top of our descent. Uh, we just... Um, arrived on our star, the Parch star. So we'll be starting our descent into JFK. Full disclosure, this is actually my second attempt. Um, I was recording this and uh, my approach and everything, I was about 800 feet off the ground and the whole sim crashed. Um, to desktop so that happens from time to time <clears throat> I think I was having trouble with graphics but either way um, we're gonna try it again hopefully it doesn't happen this time but uh, so we're all set up here we started our SID I mean our star you can see that the uh, aircraft is slowing itself down in preparation for the descent uh, which is coming up here in three miles 3.7 miles and just to recap uh, we've already set up the auto land sequence um, we have our speed brake armed we have our auto brakes at three and gears up currently obviously and as we get closer, we're going to uh, configure the aircraft for arrival. So there we go. We're getting uh, the start of our descent now. Power is pulling back. And we're starting to descend towards JFK. Going to hear an in-flight announcement here in just a second from um, Black Box. beautiful above the cloud but once we get below the clouds or through the clouds it's gonna be a little rough and ladies and gentlemen we have begun our initial descent at this time we ask that you kindly begin to recheck the security of your seatbelt and if you've removed any items from the overhead bins please begin to refill them at this time please check around your seating area and the seat pocket in front of you for any cups glasses or other articles you wish to discard kindly hand these items to the flight attendants as they make their way through the aisle. Thank you so much. We should be landing in approximately 15 to 20 minutes. All right. Uh, what I just did there was uh, on my um, joystick. I... Um, dropped the throttle down to zero and just to reset the auto throttle I toggled it off and then back on again. Uh, we're reaching flight level 180 so we could switch to the local barometric pressure which is 3012 um, and we're continuing our approach. We're gonna set our landing uh, or approach reference speed so um, we're gonna do a full flap arrival uh, so 40 degrees on the flaps, um, and then our speed will be set at 139 for our approach. So I click that and then enter it into our flap speed setting, and then you can see it shows up here as our uh, reference information for our approach. Now, um, in Navigraph, I mean in SimBrief, uh, you can actually 
pull up the approach chart um, and overlay that onto the map. Uh, so we're going to do that right now. And as you can see, we're approaching Charlie, 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 the VOR. And we're making a left turn bearing 229, 229 to Rober. And then we um, are basically going to fly direct to the um, to Capit uh, to start our final approach. Um, but obviously, you can pull up the charts, overlay it right onto the map. You can look at the chart directly, um, and you can see that you can still see yourself on the map, of course, or on the chart. So that's a pretty neat tool. Um, you can also kind of pull this up uh, in the sim as well. So if you go in and click on Navigraph Charts, it will actually pull up a little window for Navigraph. And that way you can actually look at that stuff right here um, in the sim. So you don't have to be moving away from it. But I usually have it open in a web page on a different window. This makes things a little easier. Um, they're pulling through the clouds here. Um, you can also actually um, in the PMDG with this uh, in-flight um, tablet, you can also pull up your charts uh, right here as well. So you know, if you wanted to, you could search for the JFK arrival charts. And we're doing the parse 3. So you can actually pull it up right here on the sim, which is pretty cool too. That way you can take a look at it while you're, while you're flying. It even shows you on the map here too as well. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's also nice, this is a good um, thing to use when you're taxiing at the airport because um, you can pull up the uh, airport map and um, it's a little easier uh, if you don't want to use the taxi ribbon which um, I have turned on because I do use the ATC. And coming up on um, 10,000 feet, which means that we're going to have to be under 250 knots. So you're going to see the plane slowing itself down um, before it approaches the 10,000 mark. Um, so it's going to slow down to, to about 250 knots. And our anti-ice is on, and it's over 10 degrees uh, Celsius. So we can go ahead and turn that off. So we'll head to the overhead turn off our anti-ice for the engine and the wings. Boston Center Delta 12001060600 I apologize for all the noise with the ATC, but I I'd have to just turn it off completely. And um I typically fly with it on um especially if I'm flying with traffic. Um I'm really hoping that <laughs> the sim doesn't crash again as we're on our final approach, but uh, I guess we'll wait and see. Alright, so we're going to be making our right turn at Rober here. Uh, just started the right turn. And we're lining up with the approach course to the ILS for runway 22 left at uh, JFK. So once we get past, well right around Crail, we're going to throw some flaps out there. Um, our speed is good now so we can go under 10,000 feet, turn on our landing lights and we'll throw the taxi light on too. That way we don't have to worry about that once we actually land. Uh, we've gone down under 10 degrees now, but I'm going to keep the anti-ice off. It's not really a big deal. Um, if it was really, really cold, like if it was under zero degrees or 
you know, less than five degrees, I would definitely be turning the anti-ice back on, but um, not a big deal if we're kind of hovering around 10 degrees. Got some precipitation here in the New York metro area as we shoot our approach. And the aircraft looks good. Uh, everything's configured. Oh, one thing I forgot to check here. Um, I think we did it in the last video, but we'll just double check. So 110.9 is set in our nav radio and we've got to set our course to 224. So 224 on both course selectors. Alright, so now we are configured for our auto land sequence. I could hand fly it, um, I think just in the effort of, um, you know, for, for doing this video, I'm, I'm just going to do the auto land so I don't have to be so heavily concentrated on the, the landing sequence, um, it'll, the plane will just fly itself right, right onto the runway, or at least it should. <clears throat> um, we definitely have a headwind right now, 27 knot headwind. Um, which means we will probably have a crosswind once we get to the final approach. So hopefully that crosswind doesn't wreak havoc for us. And, you know, you'll want to keep an eye on, you know, any altitude restrictions and things like that. The only one that really exists um, is when we cross over Rosley. Um, we have to be at at least 3,000 feet, um, so the FMC will um, know that, it will take that into account. And then we have to be at 1,800 feet when we get to Zalpo. Of course, by that point, we will actually be on our ILS approach, so um, that won't really matter too much. We'll keep our approach reference page on the left FMC, and on the right FMC, we'll keep our legs page open. And we're just about at Crail. Um, I think once we make the right turn, I'll actually throw out some flaps. Because we're probably going to get a notification on the FMC that um, we need to add some drag to the aircraft. So let's go ahead and throw out uh, two notches of flaps. So that's actually going to decrease our airspeed to about 190 knots. So you can see that now that the flaps are coming out, the airplane is slowing itself down to a more reasonable speed for the flap settings. And there's our drag required situation. So it's telling us we need to slow down in order to um, hit the approach perfectly. Uh, since we are lined up with the ILS uh, localizer um, on an intercept heading, we will go ahead and hit VOR LOC to arm the localizer, and we'll arm the approach as well. So now you can see that those are armed currently on LNAV mode and VNAV speed, um, pending the VOR uh, localizer um, taking over and then the glide slope taking over for our final approach. So <clears throat> going about 185 knots right now in the clouds. Still haven't seen the earth outside the window in a little bit. You can see we're on our final heading to the um, 22 left and right runways at JFK. So we'll be approaching that ILS. That dashed line right there is the um, ILS course uh, interceptor. Um, so you can actually um, 
fly directly to it, so, you know, obviously we're in um, VNAV and LNAV, so the plane is going to, you know, orient to this um, kind of purple line, um, or magenta line, however you want to call it, and then uh, once we hit this um, localizer, it will automatically turn on course. Right now we're already at a good altitude for our glide slope, so the glide slope has in fact taken over. Reset our barrow. And we are pretty set now. Um, as we get to the localizer, I will actually throw full flaps and drop the gear and drop our speed down to uh, reference approach reference plus 5 which will be 144 so we're at 139 for our reference speed so we'll make it 144 um, on the indicated airspeed here and throw out one more Notch of flaps right now. Flaps five. Slow us down a little bit. And as soon as the aircraft starts making a left turn, I will throw out the rest of the flaps to flaps 40 and drop the landing gear. Still can't see anything outside. Alright, so I also want to pull up, I'm going to pull up the airport diagram here. So it even gives you kind of a picture. And then, you know, we can get really close. We can get kind of some information there. So anyway, just showing you that. So we're going to put our full flaps out. Drop the landing gear. As we are now on the localizer. And we'll drop our speed down to reference, uh, approach reference plus five, which is... 144 and we are configured for landing so we'll just do a quick checklist we've got our speed brake armed we've got our auto brakes armed and we've got our approach heading and our ILS frequency is in which we're already on and we are set up for auto land sequence flaps are out Gears down. We are good to go. Actually, going to shut off the tablet just to hopefully reduce some of the um, <laughs> CPU usage, and hopefully, I don't get another crash to desktop at the end of the flight here. So I mentioned this earlier, um, you know, I'm not a real-world pilot. Um, I hope someday I will be. Um, aviation enthusiast, and um, obviously I'm a flight simmer. I absolutely love the PMDG 737. Um, probably going to hopefully get the 747 as well uh, once that comes out. Um, that's a much different aircraft, but... Just the functionality of the of the aircraft is what appeals to me. Um, right, so we're at 1,800 feet. Um, final approach. We still haven't seen the ground. Hopefully, we will see the ground shortly. 
our decision height is 200 feet, so by the time we get to 200 feet, we should see the runway. If we don't, technically it's not safe to land, and we would have to go into a go-around or um, divert. But I don't think we have to worry about that. Luckily, we've got the auto land, so we won't have to divert. Uh, one other feature that the PMDG has is uh, this heads-up display. So you can bring that down and, and not have to be focused on your instruments here. You can have all the information you need right up here. Um, just a nice effect. Still no visual. I mean, we've got very minor visual out there, but uh, not very good. I apologize. It is looking like it's getting a little choppy with the frame rate. But um, should be on the ground here momentarily. This is where it crashed before, so hopefully that doesn't happen now. Cannot see the runway yet. Wow. It's crazy. We're literally going to be like on the ground by the time we see the runway. about there you can do it sim I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that I'm recording this but okay I can see some treetops still no runway up oh, now I can see the field this little white line here is the runway bring it down nice and easy with the auto land uh, sequence All right, we've got the field here locked in. Runway 22 left, landing. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And touchdown. Throw reverse thrusters in. Give it some full brake power here, and we'll exit the runway to the right. Please remain seated with your seatbelt securely fastened until the captain has parked the aircraft at the gate. And we can re off the return belt. back to the normal the power. The only indication that it's safe for you to get up and move about the cabin. Please be reminded to use caution when opening the overhead. All right. Welcome to a very cloudy JFK airport. We'll pull the flaps back. Other we'll bring the RTO, I mean the uh, auto brakes back, and we will bring up the. We invite you to visit Delta.com for all your future travel needs, including checking in for a flight and managing your scam miles account. The speed brake, and we're good to go. So I'm not actually going to um, taxi to the terminal, but um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, waiting for the cabin announcements here. We'd like to thank you all for flying with us. We've enjoyed having you on board, and look forward to the opportunity to serve you once again. So you can see it actually tells um, tells me where on the runway I landed. Um, it tells me what my um, vertical speed was at touchdown. So it was um, 167 feet per minute. Uh, you want that number to be as close to zero as possible. Uh, most virtual airlines, um, I'm just going to put my parking brake on here, so I'm not running off into the wild. Um, most virtual airlines have a threshold where, you know, if you have more than, I think at, at uh, Flight Delta Virtual, it's over 600. If that number is more than minus 600, Feet per minute, um, they will reject the PIREP. So we've got our route in here. Um, it says that the flight now may be ended, um, which means 
you can end the flight and submit the pyre up even though you're not at the gate you're on the ground um you know what have you so we'll finish up this and we'll submit it so we'll hit finish and then we'll go to send and it has all the stuff here you can put in a comment here you can download the pyrep but you can send that pyrep right off it's successful so we'll close that and let's head over to fly delta virtual and look there we go our pyrep has been approved so now we can actually go to that flight so you can see my actual um, stats here for the airline and um, yeah this is a little messed up but that's okay um, but you can see like the ACARS log is here the pirate was approved and you know all the information about how many passengers how much revenue obviously fake revenue um, that we generated and our landing speed uh, landing vertical speed so uh, everything's good here um, it, and I've been credited for the um, 53 minutes of time and um, that's that so I hope you enjoyed this video I appreciate you watching if you can give me a like and um, feel free to subscribe to the channel as well and hopefully we'll have some more videos like this in the future but uh, for now thanks for watching and uh, take care